Today, don't blink or you'll miss it. The featured trade of the week, it only lasts about three minutes long. There's a quote from Sun Tzu's book, The Art of War, which reminds me of today's featured trade. He says, the battle is won before it begins. And some ideas to save you money, how to recognize and get out of those bad trades. Well, my paraphrase of Sun Tzu was almost right. What he really said was, every battle is won before it is fought. Now, what the hell does that mean? It means good trade selection. Let me show you what I mean right now. Every day trader the micro should know that every Thursday morning, like clockwork actually, 8.30 Eastern Time, it's the CPI day. That's Consumer Price Index. How's that inflation doing? I got this morning squawk newsletter from CNBC, and it says number one on the list today is the CPI report at 8.30. Note the date up there, Thursday, January 12th, 2023. Now, this trade date is important, Thursday, January 12th, 2023. Inflation is running rampant. The feds are raising the interest rates monthly, and these figures will move the market. That's a fact. Now, let's zoom in here and take a look. You can see from 6 o'clock all the way up until 8.30, the market was very, very flat. Not volatile at all. Uh, all the little candlesticks are short. And to remind you, candlesticks are five minutes wide. The NASDAQ micro e mini trades for $2 a point. Look at that candlestick from 8.30 until 8.35. It dropped from 11.550 down to 11.350. That's 200 points, $2 a point, a $400 drop within five minutes. Now, I haven't been doing any trading all morning. I didn't even come into my office until after 10 o'clock. And I find this situation here. It looks like a trade to me. 8.30 to 9, the market's up, then it's down, then it's up again, and then I top off again right there in the red circle. When I see those two red candlesticks inside that red circle there, I start to say, well, I'm going to try to get a piece of this. I'm going to short a contract. I won't have to risk very much because if I'm wrong, I'm going to find out very quickly. And if I'm right, it could be a great trade. I want to be perfectly clear about this. I do not know the market's going to continue to go down, but I'm a trader. My job, the odds are just 50-50. It's going to go up or it's going to go down. My job as a trader to find trades, and for two hours it hasn't been able to go up very much, and now it's topping off, and so I say, well, chances are better than 50-50 that the market's going to move down. Could I be wrong? absolutely I can be wrong. Sooner or later, if you're going to trade, you have to pull the trigger. Market's pretty volatile right now, so I'm going to have to risk a few bucks to try to make some here, but I feel my chances are good. Notice I didn't say great. You know, my friends at Tastyworks have a phrase they use a lot. It's called use brains, not bots. You can't go by a mechanical formula in this type of trading. A lot of these trades only last, like this one, 30 seconds to 3 or 4 minutes, and boom, they're gone. And you can't turn all your experience, your brains, your thought, your ability to learn, your creativity, you can't turn all that off and use a robotic formula to do this kind of trading. You shouldn't blindfold your brain and start running around in circles and just doesn't work. Consider this, there are over 150 trade signal indicators, and they all work from the same eight bits of information data feed. Open, high, low, bid, ask, trade, price, time, and volume. No wonder they all look alike. You'll see I use the MACD on every one of my trades, but it's not the end all. It's just one tool in the toolbox. And it can be a very, very good tool to use, but not so much in this trade. Stop the video and look down and try to think how you would have managed trade signals with the MACD pattern below this chart. A very common occurrence with trade signal indicators. The trade signal doesn't come soon enough to identify a price turnaround. There isn't any trade signal indicator that can predict the future and neither can you. All trade signal indicators use the same information. Open, high, low, bid, as trade, price, time, and volume. Think about this. If you see it on the chart, it's already history. Look in the green circle on the screen. In a short interval of time, you run out of buyers and have more sellers, and prices reverse.
Look at the yellow highlight. It's probably no coincidence. The price reversal happens at the same price at 8.30 and again at 9 o'clock. Of course, I can say this now with the genius, the full genius of hindsight. But at 10.30, I saw a pattern that was very similar to the one at 9 o'clock. And I guarantee you at 10.31, I did not have the genius of hindsight. Whatever's going to happen with this trade is yet unknown but you're going to see the results in a moment the live trade screen is coming up next i need your help please if you want to see another video like or similar to the one you've seen today hit the like button please i tally those it helps me determine the subjects and trades for future videos thank you make it easy on yourself you want to be notified when we put a new video up be sure and hit the subscribe button and if you click the bell you'll get a text or email and you'll know exactly when new videos are posted Let's get to it. The live trade screen. Three parts here. The chart with the candlesticks, trade signal indicator on the bottom, and over on the left is the bracket OCO frames with the entry stop loss and the target price. I was in a hurry to get into this trade, so I just shorted the contract immediately at uh, 11460 I'm trading 11474 now so I'm down $28 in the trade but what I did that I uh, don't recommend for beginners is go ahead and short the contract and now I'm going back I'm going to enter my stop loss price and I'm going to look at my target price and decide what I want to put there the target price is really just a placeholder the market doesn't care how much money you want to make. Things are beginning to happen fast now. I'm watching with my eyes in two places, the red circle on the right, the trading price, and the red circle up in the box for the stop loss. It's now set at 11.475. But I kind of got lucky here. Now the prices are moving down. I'm actually in the money trading at 11.456 right now. And so I can feel comfortable putting that stop loss down to 11465 at only risk $10 but wait there's more i'm trading all the way down at 11454 right now so i'm going to wait a second and reconsider where i want to put that stop because the market is trading right now all the way down to 11450 and that puts me ahead on the trade. So I decided to put the stop at 11,460, which is exactly the same as the entry point, which means I cannot lose any money on this trade. And, and that is a sign of good risk management on the trade. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop the trade. Stop the video right here. Freeze frame. The reason I did that is because it's the reason I picked this video to show you today. I'm about to decide very quickly to get out of this trade. It happens fast, so I wanted to explain it to you before you see it. Here we go. Now, what you're seeing now is a freeze frame that's 2 minutes and 15 seconds into this trade. In the last 9 seconds, the price has dropped from 11454 down to 11450 40. If you're a beginner, let me tell you, there's two kinds of money you can lose. You can lose money out of your account and you can lose unrealized hard-earned gains that you already have in a trade. I never had a bad day when I make $45 in two and a half minutes. I decide instantly to exit the trade and you'll see me get my Tastyworks mouse and pull that stop down to 11,437 and the moment I let that left mouse button go, the trade was filled and I profited $45.50. And the Tastyworks mouse takes a bow. I guarantee you somebody is watching this video out there going, Hey, he was making money. Why the hell did he get out of the trade? Well, because I was making money. I chose this. This You saw the setup at the beginning of this trade. Prices are very volatile in nine seconds. Uh, it changed $28. It can go the other way just as quickly. So a uh, bird in hand is worth two in the bush and all that. I made the choice to get out of the trade. Now, after the trade's over, I can go back and get the chart and look at it, and I can second guess my decision. And sometimes I'm going to look really good, and sometimes it's going to look like a really dumb move. You can't know ahead of time. But like I said, I never had a trade where I made $45 in 2 minutes and 15 seconds that I would, uh, that I would call it a bad day. I know it's completely counterintuitive when a great trade is going, 
and you're up $45 in 2 minutes and 15 seconds, you want to let that sucker run. I get people all the time send me an email. What should I do? What should I do? Uh, I think I should keep the let the trade run and put a trailing stop on it. Well, that's good. You can do that. But you're going to have to risk an extra $45.50 to be able to do it. That's the point. You remember at the beginning of this video, I promised you I'd give you some information about how to get out of a bad trade. This trade, 20 minutes later, would have been a bad trade. I would have given all the profits back and my $45.50 would have vanished into thin air. Let's talk about a term for a minute. It's called unrealized gains. At the moment in, when I stopped out of this trade, I was up $45.50, but whose money was it? It's unrealized gains, certainly not in my account yet, but it's only one mouse click away from being in my account, which is why I always think of unrealized gains as actually, at least for me, being realized. That's my money. The minute it shows up as a profit on the screen, it belongs to me. There's nothing unrealized about it. To continue the trade, I have to risk that money. And that's my point. You can keep a good trade from going bad. A little uh, preemptive move. All traders do it, probably with some regularity. You hold a trade a little bit too long and you wind up giving the money back. And it feels worse losing money that was found money than it does money you already had. How can that be? If you've been around the channel a while, you know what I say many, many times in many of the videos that uh, this kind of trading is like life. You always have to make decisions before you have all the information. Now, anybody married more than five years can verify that. I want to give you a couple of more things that can help you, especially if you're a beginner. Everything to do with trade selections. Patience, of course. I also suggest in my book a routine of uh, a regimen, actually, of 25 practice trades. Now, 25 good practice trades in a row is what I recommend, but I'm careful. I want to define what a good trade is. A good trade, obviously, is when you make money, but a good trade can also be a trade that you got out of wisely to keep from losing money. Now, when you're trading, and you lose five, ten, fifteen dollars on a trade, and you get out of a trade that would have gone much worse. Uh, that's actually a good trade, even though you lost a little bit of money. The bad one where you lose a lot of money, you know, fifty, hundred, hundred fifty dollars, because you substitute hope as a trading strategy. Those are the ones you have to eliminate because they will knock your profits down. You'll have to make ten good trades to make up for two bad ones if you allow that to happen. And you're the one who makes that decision, so give that some thought. Be sure you look at the text down below the video because there's lots of free stuff down there. Beginner's Playlist, two of those, in fact. Uh, a free trade simulator. No credit cards or personal information required other than your name and email. It's from the Chicago Merck Exchange. It's free. You can download it. The link's down below the video here. You can be up and running in about five minutes with your own practice account. Be sure and hit the subscribe button. I'm Don Singletary, and I hope every day is a payday for you. And thank you.